Looking at either Gabriel Jesus, who's been misfiring of late, mm -hmm. or possibly Sterling up front, obviously still no De Bruyne. It hasn't mattered thus far, but then again, the one thing I might say would might be in Chelsea's favor in terms of not losing, maybe getting a draw or, or sneaking a win, is, is the fact that they, they're unlike most of the teams that City would face, right? So if Sadi plays his game with a possession on the pressing, it's not, those aren't the, that's not the profile of the teams that City have beaten during this run. So obviously City are a better side, but yeah, I, I don't make City odds-on favorites. to win No, that. you don't? No. Okay, so you take Gabriel Jesus or Raheem Sterling or whoever you want to put up top right now for Manchester City is better than whatever Chelsea can throw up front on the other, on the other side. Morata, obviously not the answer. Sure. Giroud, we, we've talked about it. Maybe then you talk about Eden Hazard being as a, as a front guy, but then I think you lose what he does best and how he can better impact the game. And so then you, you talk about what Chelsea can do with their possession of the ball. I'll turn it around and say, what about what Manchester City can do with their possession of the ball? Maybe that ability of Manchester City to get possession of the ball pass through that midfield of Chelsea, who we have seen, that if you put enough passes together and enough athleticism around guys like Jorginho, they have, a dif they have difficulties defending. We have seen it now over a couple of games. So it feels like there needs to be some adjustment from Chelsea in order to approach Manchester City. But even if they make those adjustments, I don't think right now they're better than Manchester City. And Manchester City, with their possession, their passing, their talent, and their movement, Win this I think that is the, one of the. Key, I think that is the key thing for Chelsea. It's what they can do without the ball. Right. We know they're a good side. You know, they've got some flaws. And is Kante going to be suited playing further forward? Probably not. And is Jorginho a great passer of the ball? Yes. But can he be slightly got at defensively as exposed by Spurs? Then yes. So it's what they do when not in possession. Because if they don't, if they're as haphazard as they've been in a couple of games recently, then they will be exposed. And, and Sarri and Zola will have a good, had a good think about this. I don't see them changing shape because he's played the 4-3-3 and that's kind of what he's done. But he may have to start just altering things within the game to, to try and negate what City do. Welcome into Extra Time. Gab, you've almost been out for 24 hours. What a beautiful moment for you. I have. In fact, I was just working out. I, 21. I got up at half past two okay. local time. 19 and a half. That's half past nine. So that would be half past nine, yes, yeah. So it would, no, it's 21 and a half hours. Wow. 20 and a half hours. Wow. You're and looking you good, not, though. And you're still not going to bed? You're going out to dinner tonight? Well, you, you, you got to eat. I need some nourishment. Well, you can just <laughs> eat quick, bang, bed. No, no, no. We does this look like, properly where yeah. I come from. Does this look like a man that's passing up? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> come on. Do you, do you, do you think he's come come nourishment in his life? Fatigued or not? I mean, I, you've got to eat. <laughs> Question of priorities. Why do Gab and Ali dislike each other? Ooh, why do we dislike each other? You're an Eagles fan, that's, uh, that's one. I, indeed. As you're dad, Eagles, you're right? Cowboys, and, they, and they really hate each other, yeah? Uh, yes, it's right. a strong dislike. Right. We're rivals. Okay. Mostly one way, but... Um, Since way? when? <laughs> I think the Eagles dislike the Cowboys more than right. the yeah. Cowboys worry about the Eagles. They're more concerned with sort of their, uh, you know, charging people to, to go and sit in the parking lot and watch a game. Okay. Right. Jerry Jones. Right, let's not get into like all, of this. <laughs> all of this. All this stuff. But well, no, I don't hate Gab, though. No. no? No. Your wife? Probably, yes. <laughs> yes, I think so. And she doesn't hate many people, but I think Gab is on that list. Really? Because Gab yelled at her. Oh, at yeah. a restaurant. Yeah, yelled at her? At a oh, restaurant. I, I, I missed... I missed... <laughs> I got that wrong. I thought your wife hated you. Well, but that's that's a different conversation. <laughs> well, that's where you were going. That's a different conversation. Hand out advice and that kind of thing. You know? <laughs> Shack his power rankings. <laughs> no, I can. You know, I can. If you want to come and visit the uh, <laughs> the marriage counselor here, it's uh, no problem. How's that basement doing? Oh, oh, right. dear. oh not the basement. <laughs> Good job. I'm not. I'm not in the basement now. I'm, I'm out of the basement. How, the how's the smell? It's damp. Yeah. Of course, that's what water would do. Yeah. <laughs> Don't. Gab. No, Gab. but hold on. Does Gab hate me, though? Gab, that... Do you hate Ali? Gab hates everybody. I don't think Gab hates anyone yeah. apart from Mark Ogden. See, he hates Mark Ogden. Uh, yeah. I do not hate Ali. I do not hate Mark Ogden. Well. Well. <laughs> Is that the senior writer? Yeah, senior writer. Gab's just a writer. Yeah, the senior writer. Gab, how can we still call Juve Inter the Derby d'Italia when Juve's won almost twice the amount of games as Inter? Signed sincerely a disgruntled AC Milan fan. 
You can't call it that. It's stupid to call it that. Why do all the Italians that call it for, that? Because all Italians don't. It's something people. Well, not all Italians. Right, I was in Olive Garden, and all they were talking about is Darby. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> genuinely Italian place. No, look. I mean, the, the, the fact. Oh, of the you hate the Olive Garden. Is that in terms of supporters, Inter were the second best supported team in Italy. Um, they still have the highest average attendance. They may still well, may still be the second best supported team in Italy. <laughs> Craig's gone. But, <laughs> For a long time, they had won the second most Serie A titles. The problem is, is that since 1980, Inter have won five, six, five or six titles, and then Juve would say those don't count because they come with an asterisk post calciopoli and Juve won about a billion. So whereas the gap was 20 to 12 in, as of 1980, today it's 34 to 18, mm. 36 if you ask Juve fans. Why did you take your earpiece out? My, my ears are itchy. <laughs> no, I'm being serious now because I got one of those stupid little temporary ones. Well, your other one broke, didn't my it? My moulding is a way to get fixed and I hate these things, so I've got an itchy ear because it's right in there. I thought you were taking out so you couldn't hear Gab anymore. <laughs> Which wouldn't make any I'm, sense. I'm sitting right next to him. <laughs> well, exactly. It's the second stupidest thing you've said in the last, <laughs> last 30 seconds. Is I'm not even going to count in the rest of the day. Is Gab a mal malanista? Mal Melanisti? Melanista. 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 Even I know you that kidding? one. Are you okay? What? Well, look, it's Melanista. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm Melanista, don't I? What am I? What? What? <laughs> <laughs> which means, <laughs> which means, am I a Milan fan? The answer is. If so, be, then I understand no. why you hate Inter so much. No, mm. I do not hate Inter. Uh, I don't. It's I don't hate, hate in this world things. at you, Gav. So, so who do you support then? I just, I, I cover the game for a living. You can't, you know, when you find out how the sausage is made, it's very difficult to go to support actual teams just because they're teams. Okay, as a kid, as a kid. He's setting himself up for a As a kid, I support, I, su I support Italy at the World Cup. Oh, there you go. Uh, this is a good question. I never saw Craig play, neither did I see Ali. Uh -huh. But, all, what? but yeah. which player presently has a resemblance to the way they both played? Messi. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think, Gam? That's a good question. It is a good question. I saw a little bit... You want, you want a current player? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, no, that wouldn't it. And don't say Fellaini. <laughs> no, but if you, if you, I mean, help me out here. So somebody, somebody tall, relatively skilled. Who's well, tall? Not He's not that quick. tall. Who, me? Relative yeah, to his era. He Everybody's a, tall compared to you. He was a <laughs> oh, yeah, just because you pumped the <laughs> yeah, up a little stand bit. there. Six one. But I mean, you yeah. need a parachute to get off that chair. <laughs> somewhat, so, somewhat rangy would be, would be a term for, for young Craig, pre-injury, yeah? Would you, would you say that? I was box to box at right, one come on, point. Give us a plan yeah. then, Gam. It's difficult. I'm, 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 I'm working on it. I'm, mm. you know, and Ali? I will, I will say. But uh, well, he doesn't get the self like A short, short Jeru. A short Jeru. <laughs> That's what I was. <laughs> yes. And yeah. maybe not quite as, you know, attractive. Well, look, I did, I, I did a ride at home. It's fine. <laughs> She loves me, uh, I think. Yeah. She hates Gap, but she loves me. The thing is, there's no players. I don't think anybody's playing today like how we played central midfield. Right. Previously, it's, only, it's only a fun game, you know. Oh you no, know, so you can't good. compare, because we were doing not the defensive job, we did both. Right. I mean, who's doing that now? Nobody. He retired a couple of years ago, but he played for a long time. I mean, would you see yourself as sort of like a <laughs> slower, <laughs> less prolific Frank Lampard type? Oh, definitely less prolific. So, poor man's Frank Lampard. That's what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's basically what you're saying. Well, All right. Okay. Thank you, Gav. With his goals, that would be a bit right, yes. <laughs> Has anyone watched the show Married with Children before? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, doesn't Craig remind you of a Scottish version of Al Bundy? Yeah. What? <laughs> On the show. On the show. Yeah. Because of the show... Somebody needs to get me a picture quickly of Al Bundy. <laughs> He's in Modern Family now. Do you watch no, Modern I don't Family? Watch that no, what else is he? Yeah, he's, he's, he's Jay Pritchard in Modern Family. I, I, think, I think it's more his mood as opposed yeah, to, yeah. to his don't looks. Actually look like but that's not how he is. Well, I don't imagine at home. I don't think. I see him on the golf course, he's not like that. Uh, Here he is a little bit of album. Yes. yes. You know, sort of. Oh, I'm angry, here. Yeah. when they come in and they say, well, we're doing Ballon d'Or again. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> he goes all Al Bundy. Al Bundy's like a 1980s version of Archie Bunker. I don't know him either. Oh, I don't watch sitcoms. Archie Bunker is more of a 1970s a version of. Yes, I don't. Yeah, watch it's all. I didn't have a like Married with Children. I don't watch it. It's right. drama oh. myself. Yeah. Drama. Yeah. Don't you know, know the character names? Peggy was a mother. Peggy was a big redhead. Yeah, yeah. annoying. Christina Applegate. Yes. yes. Kelly. 
That was Kelly Bundy, and, yeah. And Bud was the uh, I mean, brother. I'm, I'm going to take me to watch Tavid. You know how difficult it is to open a nice bottle of red wine? I'm going to take me to sit and watch sitcoms. No. <laughs> See, there you go. That's very Al Bundy. That's something Al Bundy would say. TV persona, you know, a little different to... Right, so we're at home. You saw, you come round with the puppy last week, didn't Yes, you? Oh. that's only because puppies are involved. We know what you're like with puppies. So right, I said to you, come round with your... That's a soft spot. Yes. A soft spot. <laughs> no, no, I want and to then my five-year-old was running around. <laughs> and then Greg said, don't run! <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's not true. Because the dog was chasing him and he was crying. Yes, and then you told him not to run. I told him not to run, and he did run. He's a very obedient young boy. <laughs> it's not at all. <laughs> uh, I think, Gab, you're here for the weekend. I am. Wonderful. Well, enjoy your dinner tonight. Thank you. Does, does my wife get invited to that dinner? <laughs> we're, not, we're not even invited. Oh, we're, not we're not even invited. Yeah. There you go. We'll get over it's that. It's funny, that. Uh, so, <laughs> can't imagine why. So, who's on to, are you working tomorrow? Yeah, I'm... So, Craig and Gab on the show tomorrow? Ooh. No, no. Well, separately. Right, but you're both on the show. I'm, we're just doing part... Right, which part, part, which part are you doing? Ballon d'Or bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Al Bundy. Digital bit. tomorrow, digital, and then the show. Right. And then out to film. And I'll be doing the, expe the uh, um, extended financial fair play analysis. Oh, oh yeah. Great. That's Tune that. in for that. With, uh, <laughs> with special inserts from Mark Ogden. Oh, <laughs> Mark's on. It's worth watching. <laughs> uh, definitely. <laughs> senior that. writer. Senior writer. Yeah. The senior writer. The senior writer. You're just a writer. I'm just a senior writer. Max Musings. <laughs> he made sure that he said senior writer. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Let's go. Cool. We're done. Thank you very much. Who's bloody Bundy? Al, Al Bundy. Bundy. Oh my. Get out of here. <laughs> what? <laughs> very grumpy. <laughs> He's a shoe salesman, wasn't he? I don't even remember him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was. He was. Yeah. It wasn't like Juve were their scintillating best to get their win. They were there for the taking, but Inter just didn't get it done. Yeah, I mean, I think if you look back for a good 65, 70 minutes, we saw maybe the best Inter performance of the season against a good team. And yet, they don't convert the chance, and Juve do what they do so many times, which is they simply outlast you, and they wait for a mistake, and then the mistake happens, and they capitalize. And they do that very effectively. And, you know, Spalletti, I think, will be or is already being slaughtered for, for taking off Politano and putting on Borja Valero in midfield. And, you know, could that have changed things? And Inter will go back to their navel-gazing and say, we could have done this, we could have done that differently. But the point is, it's very simple. You know, you only get so many chances against Juve. If you score that chance with Gagliardini, then you can manage the game, then you're in the lead, then you can think about counterattack, whatever. You don't do that, and eventually Juventus are going to pick you off. So when Juve didn't have the ball, and although they did have a couple of chances into, I thought Chiellini in particular again, just reading the game, and stepping in at the right time, and blocking at the right time, and organising. He's just him and Bonucci at the back. You know, bearing in mind there's no Buffon behind him anymore. It was so successful, but he's getting a hell of a lot of protection at the moment. Yeah. Chesney, uh, you know, from two very, very good centre halves. So they're not the quickest anymore, but they've been over the block, they've been round the block, and they've just got good brains and they just understand. You're always going to give up the odd chance now and again, you know, from good play. But I just felt. Chiellini at times again was, was, was superb. But Juventus, this is, there's no motivation required for such a match. They will want to get all three points and ensure that they keep their 11-point gap or, or at least increase it, perhaps, against Inter. Mina, thank you very much. Go and warm up. Uh, Craig, looking at this clash, so many different subplots <laughs> going into this game. Yeah, and you just know that Ronaldo wants it to be all about him, doesn't yeah. it? And... Uh, you know, for those that were saying, well, there was one or two, you know, well, he'll find it difficult in Italy, you know, it won't be so easy to score goals, and it was a slow start, and then he starts to find his feet, and all of a sudden, Allegri finds the positions for him, he gets to understand his teammates, and they're finding a nice balance within a great squad, by the way, they've got a great squad, Juventus, they've got a, a group of players where he can play so many different formations, he can play Ronaldo through the middle, Ronaldo out wide, he can play Ronaldo with a partner, they could play three at the back, he's got a... a a lot of options in there. Uh, I hope we get a great game here. Inter are a good side. Yeah. They are heavily reliant on Icardi. The interesting thing for me is, and we'll probably look at it in a little bit, is that I think Juve have only made one change from the last game, whereas Inter have made, I think, four changes. So a little bit more chop and change from yeah. Inter than Juve. What are you expecting, Alan? 
Well, to, in the start of the season, we got excited because we thought maybe this is the year that there are going to be challenges to Juventus. Then maybe this is a year where Serie A really makes a statement that it's not Juventus and the rest of, of the group. And it, it hasn't been the case. And a team like Inter that gave some early signs that perhaps have taken steps forward. And I think that they have taken steps forward. And I think this is a solid group. My only concern is, is that as we think they've taken steps forward, they're still 11 points behind Juventus, not even midway through the season. So Juventus still dominant, and we will see that on the field once again. A team in Juventus that has solid player after solid player, individual performance after individual performance, a guy that perhaps doesn't get a whole lot of mention, Rodrigo Betancourt, who is quickly becoming one of the best midfielders in the world. He's a guy that runs the midfield for them. And then you have the freedom of guys like Dybala and Ronaldo to, to then decide the game for you. Inter doesn't have as many players that can change the game as Juventus does. Well, to, Craig was mentioning the lineup. Let's take a look at it starting off uh, with Juventus. Uh, no real surprises here, Gal. Uh, no, it's pretty much, uh, pretty much what we expected. It's, it's the usual. Uh, you know, we have Ronaldo and Mandzukic there lining up ahead of Dybala. In fact, it's going to be much more of a fluid uh, front three at certain times with Mandzukic going through the middle. Uh, no Alexandro, no issue, Matteo De Chiglio, uh sliding over uh, into that left position and uh, with, uh, with Jacques Cancelo over on the right. Is there, a weak, how... sorry, is there yeah. a weak spot at all here, Craig, when you look at the event aside? I, I always think the goalkeeper's a bit of a weak point, having watched him for so long, but he's actually done quite well. Yeah. He's, he actually has done well. He had that howler against Manchester United which in the Champions League, which is, by the way, the only game they have lost this season. Uh, so I was going to say it's a fortress in Turin, but it's not quite, but let's be honest. Yeah. They should have absolutely hammered Man United that, that day. Prior to that, the last game they lost was in April against Napoli when Koulibaly scored. So they're absolutely rock solid, particularly at home. Gavin, we talked touching the formation there. That, that front three could be anything. Mm. You know, you've got Kinsella who's, uh, Kinsella who's played left back recently, and De Chilio right back, so that could jump. So he has so many options in there. There is no real weak point. But what the rest of Italian football, I think, are looking at, and particularly Napoli and one or two others, are can anybody interrupt the momentum of this event to side? Because if they don't, like Ali mentioned, it's a runaway train to the end of the season. I don't see how these teams, whether it's Inter, Roma, and you go down that list, so Lazio, AC Milan, it, it doesn't feel like these teams are good enough to really compete with Juventus. What they're good enough to do is take points from each other. And in doing so, they create more and more distance between Juventus and the rest. Juventus, and this guy in particular, Cristiano Ronaldo, have put themselves at a level that I think is far superior to the other teams, but not only that. They're talking about Serie A as, okay, we're going to win this, and today would be an statement in order to make sure that they win the, the Scudetto once again. But their goals are different than everybody else's in Italy. They're thinking Champions League. They're thinking bigger picture, bigger things, and bigger thoughts. That in itself, I think, puts Juventus in a different level. We mentioned no real surprises in the event of starting 11. Couple, though, for Inter, again. Yeah, and I wonder to what degree this has to do with, obviously, uh, they, they have a, a must-win Champions League game coming up against uh, PSV Eindhoven. We know there's no Raja Nainggolan. Um, uh, what's interesting is there's no Matthias Vecino either in the starting 11, going with uh, Roberto Gagliardini in midfield. He gives you more physicality uh, in some ways, but you know, certainly not the emotional leader that Vecino is. And at the back, no uh, De Vrij either. Uh, we wax lyrical, some of us, well, me, yeah. about <laughs> De Vrij and Skriniar being perhaps the best defensive partnership in, in Serie A. Uh, but broken up the, this time around with uh, with Miranda, who struggled in his last few outings. Uh, it, it, inevitably, we, we mentioned before, Icardi grabbing all the headlines up against Ronaldo. Going into this clash, he is one of the best in the business. I was saying to Gab before we came on air, what would it take to get him away from Inter? I mean, Inter, <laughs> Inter fans won't want to lose him, but, uh, you know, Chelsea will be looking for strikers. You know, maybe Bayern Munich will be looking... Some of the big teams will be looking... Other big teams will be looking for strikers, and... He's absolutely rock solid, in my opinion. He's got 11 goals this season. He carries them. He should play more for the international team. He doesn't get as much game time for Argentina as I think he should. He's still quite young, you know, in mid-20s, so he's at a good age, but he needs the support from the wide players, particularly Perisic, who hasn't had the greatest of season this year. If he gets enough support, he's a potential match winner. And part of the problem for Inter, as they look into this season and to the future, is the fact that 
for the last couple of years, every time there's a transfer window, the names of Icardi and Perisic come up. And then those names are going to continue to come up. And so they're in, in, in this between state as are we the sort of team that is now buying talent or are we selling talent? And because you're in that between state, it is, it is imperative that you then advance in Champions League so that you can give yourself some leeway, so that you can present yourself to Icardi and Perejic and some other players and say, we're a Champions League team. Yeah. This, is what, this is what we're doing. This is what we're building towards. And so then maybe what we see in this lineup is perhaps saying, you know, it's always going to be difficult to get a result at Juventus, but maybe our focus is on what we do in Champions League and try to advance out of that group. Well, I, I think, I mean, you're only touched upon uh, some, some good subjects there. I mean, I think we have to remember Inter just coming out of or on their way out of financial mm -hmm. fair play restrictions. Uh, they That's have, not going to too much detail. I won't go into detail on that, but uh, the attitude right now is to generate excitement, grow the club commercially, get them... Uh, as, as permanent fixtures in the top four and in the Champions League. Remember, this is their first Champions League appearance since 2011. Um, the response from the fans has been phenomenal, drawing 62,000 uh, a week to, uh, to the San Siro for a team that's, you know, good but not great. And I think next summer is the one where they may sell one or two players, but they're definitely going to invest and maybe try to freshen up the squad a little bit. And they should go through in the Champions League. I mean, it's not, it's not done and dusted yet. They need a win, and Tottenham, Tottenham need, to, need win. to win away to Barcelona, who, of course, have already qualified. 20 minutes to go then until kickoff. Uh, just taking a look at the other games this weekend. Three on Saturday, the rest coming out on Sunday. All of them available on ESPN+. Coming up then after the break, we'll continue our countdown to kickoff. Juve against Inter, many minutes away. Atlanta massive favourites, aren't yeah. they? And rightly so. Yes. Portland have been very much the fairy tale story. You mentioned Valeri being player of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. It's going to end though, isn't it? They're not going to win it. It's hard to see a way in which Portland Timbers goes into Atlanta, into that environment, 70,000 plus, passionate Atlanta fans behind their team, creating that sort of atmosphere, and then Portland walks in and gets a result. Now, the approach that I would take if I were Portland and Giovanni Savarez is say, the pressure is not on us. It's them. Yeah. You guys go ahead and take on that pressure. You carry the momentum of the game. You have the possession. You have the players. You have the ballers. You have all the all-stars. We're just coming in here and trying to do a part. I don't even know why we're here, sure. to be quite honest. Why are we even making the trip? Yeah. But we're just going to participate. But the longer the game goes where maybe Portland are hanging on and hanging on and hanging on, that energy of 70,000 people may just become nerves. And nerves that the, f the, the team is going to feel on the field if you're the Atlanta United. So yeah. it's important that Atlanta United are comfortable being the team under pressure. And they're comfortable being the team at home. And that they get off to a quick start. They get off to a quick start. This game can get away from Portland very quickly. And so Atlanta has the talent, has the players, has the fans, has the home field advantage, has everything in, in place for them. I think it's Atlanta to lose it, but be careful with Paul. Just be careful. That's all I'm going to say. No matter what, by the way, Venezuela is going to lift the trophy tomorrow. Or, on the other hand, that Venezuela is going to be on the losing side. No, why not? No matter what, Venezuela is going to lift the trophy tomorrow.